I think one of the reasons shock absorbers are neglected is because they fail so slowly. They don't scream at you like brakes. They just kind of get worse and worse and worse over time. I like to replace shock absorbers maybe every 80,000 miles. Most people would push them to 150 or more. And that gradual failure does affect safety. I've already mentioned this. So Cherry here, my 380SL, is going to get new Bilstein shock absorbers. And that's right, I recommend only Bilsteins for these cars. Remember, these are not high performance sports cars. If you wanted to turn one into one, you can. But if you're just making this a cruiser, like I'm going to with mine, I'm gonna replace with Bilstein. I think they're the best out there for these older Mercedes. So I've got a new set of fronts, a new set of rears. They come with a great hardware package and everything you need. I'm gonna to try to demonstrate this problem with them slowly failing. And you cannot tell if your shock is any good by just taking it off the car and pushing up and down and say, oh, it's not totally shot. Because remember, when you're pushing up and down it, like I'm going to demonstrate, you're only pushing like with 100 or 150 pounds, and you maybe got 1,000 pounds up there on one shock absorber. And that's why I say you really can't test the shock by just pushing on it. You can get some kind of idea. The better way is to push up and down on the car like I did, or take it out and drive it. Take your steering wheel on an open road, just swerve back and forth, and see how much the body rolls. If you get a lot of body roll, you know, <laughs> the shocks, are gone. If you get a lot of nose diving, when you brake hard, you know, you better consider replacing your shock absorbers. So this is the one I took off. When I looked at it on the car, you could kind of tell it had some wear here where the cover rides up and down on this shock absorber housing. So you know it's not a recent replacement. And you see a lot of wear up here on this rubber bumper. So I think these have been on there. I think they've been leaking a little fluid out of the shock. So let me show you now what I mean by doing a push test. I'm going to push down on the one I removed. I'm going to push down hard and then release. <laughs> Notice how slowly it comes back. And I don't really have to push that hard. So if you took this off the car and tested it, you might think, wow, this shock absorber is okay. Well, if you compare it with a brand new Bilstein, I'm going to have to really lean into this to push it down. <laughs> and watch the rebound rate. See that? Quite a bit faster and I'm pushing probably another 20, 30 pounds to get it compressed. So that's a good example. You just can't test shocks by pushing up and down on them. But you'll really notice a difference when you put new ones on and get out and drive the car. Look at that, I'm just finishing installing rear shock absorbers on Cherry, my 380SL, and I'm using my new holding tool. You know, this is amazing, and we couple this with a special socket that allows you to put this holding shaft right down through the center of the socket. And this was the answer when we went to install the front shocks on this car. Man, the access was just terrible. So Cherry, you know, coughed up another custom tool. <laughs> it really did. So I'm about ready to wrap this up. Notice you got to remove these panels behind the front seats in order to get to the top of the rear shocks. It's not that bad. And what I've done is, is I did this whole process. I shot a very long detailed video on how to remove and replace uh, your shocks in the R107. So I'm going to include that video with my set of shocks. Now I just want to encourage you again just replace your old shocks. You might think they feel okay, but for safety and for handling and for driver comfort, I don't want you to end up like these guys up here. Just replace your shocks.